Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Reed, and today we're going to be going over the mechanism and ECG features of right bundle branch blocks. Everybody knows these as the bunny ears on leads V1, but look, today in this video, my goal for you is to deeply understand the anatomy and electrophysiology that drives right bundle branch blocks so that you can better understand all the variations, right? These do not just come in like garden variety, right bundle branch blocks every single time. So if you want to follow along with me, I've got four ECGs that we're going to be going over today after we kind of detail the mechanism of right bundle branch blocks. So if you want, you can download those in the description below and feel free to subscribe to the channel. So let's get started. So first I want to talk about what is a right bundle branch block? And we're going to take ourselves to our handy dandy chart and we're going to look at the heart here. And so a right bundle branch block is a type of ventricular aberrancy. What does that mean? What does aberrancy mean? It's a funky word to say that the conduction system within the ventricles occurs aberrantly. It doesn't occur correctly. We know that usually what happens, right, the AV node receives signal from the SA node. So the SA node sends signal down. The AV node captures that and passes it down the bundle of Hiss. And then it branches off to the right bundle branch, the left bundle branch, and then it travels through the Hiss Purkinje system, right? What does that allow for? That allows for one rapid conduction, right? So that's how it occurs fast. That's why our QRS is less than 120 milliseconds in duration, or three small boxes. And then two, it allows for um, a certain morphology of the QRS, right? The morphology of our QRS is going to look a certain way because it's been conducted in a certain pattern. And so, as you could imagine, in a right bundle branch block, our right bundle is blocked. And so I'm going to represent a right bundle branch block today with this red X on the right bundle. Okay. So that means the right bundle from there down is not working through the conduction disturbance, right? Our highway system is disturbed. And so let's talk about some features that would explain a right bundle branch block on our ECG. So we've got our SA node. It's going to fire off or any arrhythmia or rhythm that allows for signal to get to the AV node, right? Our AV node is going to capture that signal. And, but in a right bundle branch block, the AV node, when it passes the signal down, it's going to attempt to go down the right bundle branch, but it can't because it's blocked. It's blocked there. So it can freely travel down the left bundle. And so what's the first part of the ventricle to depolarize? It's going to be our left bundle. In the left bundle, we know supplies the interventricular septum as well as the left ventricle. And so we get good normal depolarization through the left ventricle, right? And so that creates what we see like in our QRS complexes in lead one, we get that nice upright QRS. We even see a nice upright QRS and AVF for that, right? But what I really want you to focus on today is these lateral leads, right? We get our upright QRSs. But what has to happen to depolarize the right ventricle now? Well, remember that cardiac cells have the ability to conduct signal from cell to cell gap junctions. And so in order for the right ventricle to depolarize and to contract, this signal that is depolarizing through the left ventricle travels via cell to cell gap junctions all through the right ventricle. Notice how long this is taking, okay? So this takes forever to make its way through the right ventricle, okay? So what are we gonna see in a right bundle branch block? We are going to see late signals that go toward the RV or the right ventricle, right? And so where are these signal is going to be captured, or in what way are they going to be captured? Well, if you notice, these signals 
are going where? They are going away from the lateral leads, right? Because they're going from the left side of the heart to the right side of the heart. So they're going away from my lateral leads. They're going away from AVL. They're going away from lead one. And not only are they going away from those leads, but they're going away very slowly. So we will see something called a slurred S wave. These are slurred S waves, okay? All right, so let's talk about a little bit of what's some of the criteria that we're gonna see in a right blonde branch block. So far, we have one, the first thing that has to happen is the QRS has to be wide, greater than 120 milliseconds. Because we said that the normal rapid QRS conduction is whenever the, the highway system is working, it's not working here. So we cannot have a rapid or narrow complex QRS. And then two, in leads one in AVL, so my lateral leads, we are going to have late slurred S waves, right? Representing that late depolarization away from the lateral leads as they have to make their way towards the right side of the heart from the left, okay? So that's the first thing we'll see in our limb leads. Let's come over to our precordial leads, right? This is our transverse plane. And let's detail the same thing that happens. So here's our heart, right? Here's our right ventricle, left ventricle, right? You can see our AV node is labeled. And so here's our right bundle, and our right bundle branch, remember, it's going to be blocked. And so when the AV node receives any signal, the AV node is going to receive that signal. It's going to attempt to pass it down the right bundle, but it's not going to work. So what's going to happen is we're going to get good left bundle activation, which we know activates the interventricular septum and the left ventricular wall. So we're going to have good depolarization or LV. Okay. So, so far, things are normal, right? We have normal activation of a lot of the aspects of our conduction system. And so, so far, V1 will have our little septal R wave in the S wave. V2 will have our septal R wave in the S wave. V6 and V5 are going to have their nice upright QRSs because we've got those LV signals heading towards them. Okay. But what needs to happen to depolarize the right ventricle, right? We need to go cell to cell, gap junction to gap junction. And because this takes so long, this is occurring at the end of our QRS. And so we're slowly making our way through the right ventricle, causing late forces, like we said before, late signals towards the RV. And how is that represented here? Well, that's going to create a upright signal called a R prime in the leads that are representing the right ventricle. So we got an R prime. Okay. That R prime is what is telling us that is this late signal headed our way. And on the other hand, we have these late signals going away from our lateral leads, V5 and V6, and so we get, again, slurred S waves because it's negative, right? These are our slurred S waves in V5 slash V6 because those forces are going away from V5, V6, and remember in, in uh, terms or in regards to time, it's later on because this is happening last. So that's why, essentially, we get late slurred S waves in our lateral leads, which in the precordium is V5, V6. In the limb leads, it is leads 1 and AVL, kind of the same. And then we get this R prime signal in leads V1 and V2, and that R prime within our QRS is representing those light signals going towards the right ventricle, right? 
Some people, you could even say they have a morphology of an R, S, R prime, right? If you notice the QRS, it's like an R, and it's an S, and then it's an R prime. So some people will call it that way. And so that's how we get the morphology of our QRS complex in a right bundle branch block. Remember, right bundle branch blocks occur below the AV node. So these can occur in any arrhythmia in which the AV node is conducting signals down. So this can occur in AFib, A flutter, SVT, um, sinus rhythms, sinus tachycardias, junctional rhythms, right? So I want you to remember that the right bundle branch blocks can occur in any of those rhythms. And so let's take a look at some examples of this morphology in an ECG strip itself. We've got plenty of ECGs here to look at. And so here we have a sinus rhythm. You can see we've got a regular QRS complex with P waves that are conducting to our QRS. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the width of my QRS. And so if I look, you can see that my QRS duration, my QRS duration is greater than three small boxes or it's greater than 120 milliseconds. So it's wide. And so a wide QRS in the setting of a sinus rhythm should make you think, huh, if I've got a sinus rhythm, that means that the sinus node is sending signals down to my AV node, and my AV node is sending that down to the ventricles. If, it's, if that's occurring and creating a wide complex QRS, I wonder if there's a bundle branch block. That should be the first thing that comes to your mind. And so you're like, well, let me see if there's a right bundle branch block. So I look in lead V1, and I look for that RSR prime. And look what I see. I see here's my P wave, there's my QRS, and my RSR prime is right here, RSR prime. RSR prime. So here's my R prime. Here's my R prime, which is representing late RV signals, right? You see that here in V2, also RSR prime, RSR prime. But I want to confirm this, and so I remember, I, I remember saying that we have late slurry S waves in our lateral leads. And so I look over here, my lateral leads, leads 1 and leads AVL. And how about that? Look at that little slurry S wave. Look at AVL. We've even got this little slurry S wave. Okay, you can see it also here in V5 and V6. It's a little bit more subtle. You can really see it best in lead six. It just takes a little bit longer to recover. It takes a little bit longer to recover. So those are our slurred S waves in the lateral leads. And all of these features point you towards somebody whose right bundle was blocked signals were rapidly going through the left bundle which supplies the septum in the left ventricle and then we had to get slow forces going towards the right from the left which means negative in the lateral but positive forces in those v1 v2 leads let's take a look at another we have a um another rhythm here and this is a this is a really good example of how uh, right bundle branch blocks can present in different type of rhythm. So look, we have a irregular rhythm here, and there is no pattern to the irregularity, right? Sometimes it's a little bit longer, sometimes it's shorter, sometimes it's longer again. And if you look, I don't see any distinct P waves before my QRSs. And so this is an irregularly irregular rhythm. This is atrial fibrillation. And remember that AFib, what AFib does is AFib is a signal that is just bouncing kind of throughout the atria. And the AV node that's sitting here as a bystander is receiving signal from these fibrillatory waves and passing it down to the ventricles. And so we look at this. And we say, well, what's the duration of the QRS? And I measure my QRS duration, and I see that my QRS is greater than 120 milliseconds. So that makes me think, well, why would this person in AFib have a barren conduction in the ventricles? This doesn't really have anything to do with the AFib. It has everything to do with how the 
AV node, what happens after the AV node passes a signal down? So I think, I wonder if there's a bundle branch block. And so, first thing I do is I look at V1, and what do I see? I see this R, S, R prime. R, S, R prime. That R prime is telling me late RV activation. And look at my lateral leads to look at the reciprocal changes of that, which would be slurry S waves. And look at lead one. Look at those slurry S waves. That's one of my lateral leads. Leads AVL. Look at those slurry S waves. Very slurred. Let's look at my lateral leads here, V5 and V6 in the precordium. Very slurred, right? And those slurry S waves represent late forces going away from the lateral leads to the RV as it is trying to activate from left to right. And so this is all very good evidence of a right bundle branch block in the setting of AFib. Because remember, AFib, we're still conducting it from the AV node. Okay, let's look at our last example here. This is an example of a rapid rhythm. Look how fast this is. It's very fast, it's very regular. The rate here, if you look here, 300, about 150, 150 beats per minute. This is actually an example of a supraventricular tachycardia, which is, if I spell it out, supraventricular tachycardia. And this is an example of uh, AV nodal reentry tachycardia. And so this rhythm, what it means is that we have a reentry circuit within the AV node and it's sending signal down into the ventricles and down or up into the atria really, really, really fast, right? In this case, at a rate of 150 beats per minute. But notice where is the ventricular depolarization coming from? It's coming from the AV node. So in this rhythm, I should evaluate my QRS complex. And so my QRS complex seems to be wide. If I measure the duration from the start of the QRS complex to the end of the QRS complex, my QRS looks to be greater than three small boxes, so it's greater than 120 milliseconds in duration, which is wide. And I'm like, well, why, if the AV node's passing it down my his Purkinje system, why is this wide? So I should think, I wonder if there's also a bundle branch block. So I look at V1, and what do I see? I see this R, S, R prime in V1. And I look at my lateral leads, leads one, I have slurred S wave, AVL, slurred S wave, V5, V6, slurred S waves. So this is all telling me slurred S waves that we have late forces going away from the lateral leads. And this R prime tells me that we have late forces also going away from the lateral leads towards the RV. So this is all a right bundle branch block in the setting of a supraventricular tachycardia. So I, I really wanted to show you these rhythms. Why? Because a right bundle branch block can occur um, in any rhythm in which the AV node is passing that signal down, right? We said that we could see this in SVTs. We can see this in atrial fibrillation. We can see this in atrial flutter. We can see this in sinus rhythms. We can see this in junctional rhythms. Literally any flavor of rhythms that pass the signal down through the AV node, right? Ectopic, atrial, tachycardia, right? We can go on for days. So I hope this video helps you understand the right bundle branch block, right? The causes of right bundle branch block are um, more of something that you would investigate clinically, right? Does this person have ischemic heart disease? Do they have um, chronic lung disease that's put strain on the right side of the heart? Um, there's tons of reasons why this person could have a right bundle branch block. And so I hope this helps you understand the morphology of right bundle branch blocks and why um, they have the characteristic um, RSR prime and those V1, V2 leads with our late slurred S waves in the lateral leads. Um, if you have any questions, put them down into the comments. And if not, we will see you on the next ECG video. Thank you so much for watching, and um, have a great rest of your day. Take care.